Hello, and welcome back to Dimension Quest. So last year I was running Ubuntu on one of my physical machines, and I did a video on the installation and use of VMware Workstation 16 Pro. Now, during that video, and based on my experience with previous versions of Workstation on Linux, I had to reference a GitHub repo in order to get VMs to power on and to recompile each time there was a kernel update. So I've had a little experience here with Workstation 17 Pro, and I'm quite happy with what VMware has finally done. So let's go ahead and get that downloaded and installed. In today's video, we'll be getting Workstation Pro 17 installed and configured on Fedora Workstation 37. So let's head over to vmware.com slash go slash try workstation. Now that's a short link that takes you down to the download VMware Workstation Pro page. So with Workstation Pro, you do get a 30 day free trial. It is fully functional. If you prefer to have something that's completely free, then you can go with the VMware Workstation player. Now here's the big caveat with using player. You can only run a single VM at a time and you don't have the ability to create snapshots or to configure networks within your software. So a great thing about Workstation 17 Pro is that you can have multiple VMs running. You can have custom networks and reconfigure the networks to your pleasing so that you can create an entire virtual lab environment within the Workstation environment itself. Let's go ahead and get started by downloading the latest version of Workstation 17 Pro. And since we are on Linux Fedora, Workstation 37 will download that version. Look at that, I didn't even have to log in to do the download, so that's good. You can try before you buy without any, any commit here. And again, this is a 30 day fully functional trial. Okay, once the file has been downloaded, go into your download folder and right click on the file, select properties and change that to executable as program. Close that and then go ahead and right click and select open in terminal and that will take you right to the directory that has your file in there. So let's do an ls startup bundle and we can see there's my VMware workstation full. So let's go ahead and run that. Now you do need to run this as your root user. So we'll do a sudo dot forward slash so that we're in the current directory referencing the file that we're gonna run. Now I just type capital VM and I hit tab and hit enter. So now I do need to enter my password. And there we go. All right, installation was successful. So let's go ahead and look for what we have available. Now I'm hitting my super key, which if you're using a Windows keyboard would be the little Windows button there. Um, you can also just access your application overview and then search for VM. And you'll have a couple different things that show up. One will be the virtual network editor and you do have to authenticate in order to access that. It's, it's prompting me on my other screen here. So let me just get uh, authenticated. And here we go. So you can see that a clean installation gives you your bridge to networking, your host only networking and NAT. And it's gone ahead and just chosen some default networks for you. So here's, here's where one of the big differences comes into play with Workstation Pro versus Workstation Player. This virtual network editor application isn't really available if you only do Workstation Player. So no icon shows up for this to be able to run it and reconfigure things. 
Now, if I don't like 192, 168, 225 for my host only network, I can change that to, let's go with like the, uh, the VMworld hands-on labs um, network, which is 192.168.110. And it is a class C, so just um, slash 24 there. There we go. And we can leave DHCP enabled if we want to. And we just hit save. All right, so whenever you hit save on that virtual network editor, it will go ahead and close out the window for you. Now, if you want to run your VMware workstation, there is an icon available. Go to your application overview and type VM and just select VMware workstation. Now, the first time you launch it, you do need to agree to the license agreement. So I'll accept next and accept again. Next, would you like to check for up product updates on startup? Yes. And join CEIP, Customer Experience Improvement Program. Sure, we can do that. Now, I do have a license key. If you want a legitimate free license for VMware Workstation, VMware Fusion, ESX, vCenter, Horizon, all the different things that are available, then you should look into becoming a V expert. So the V expert program rewards those of us that do blogging, produce videos, do public speaking engagements around VMware software and solutions. So if you are a regular contributor to these kind of things, you can apply to the V expert program. And as part of the reward for being a V expert, you do get one year licenses for all of these different things. So if you continue to renew, you continue to get replacement licenses. Now, if you're still trying to get established and you don't have licenses yet and you don't want to pay for individual products, then I would highly recommend taking a look at the VMUG Advantage program. Now, I did highlight that in my previous video on uh, VMware Workstation, I believe. So with the VMUG Advantage program, you pay an annual fee and you get a whole suite of licenses that are available for your home, personal, non-commercial use. These are provided so that you can learn this enterprise grade software in your home lab environment. So I definitely recommend pursuing one of these avenues for licensing. So for right now, I will just go ahead and select the VMware Workstation 17 for 30 days and hit finish. Once again, gotta put in the password and here we go. And there's already a an update available. So I'll go ahead and download and install that. Okay, well, generally most updaters will do what they need to do and close themselves out, but this looks like it um, is not doing that. It's just continuing to sit here. All right, well, let's cross our fingers and hope that we don't mess anything up here. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the updater and let me try relaunching VMware Workstation. And let's see what happens here. Okay, we have the agreement again. That's kind of on the annoying side. Next, finish. All right, let's just make sure we are indeed on 1701. Yes, we certainly are. So yeah, it looks like the update did complete. It just didn't close out the window on its own. Okay, now that we have this installed, we can go ahead and get a virtual machine running. So you have a couple different choices here. You can import an OVA or OVF file. So that's a open virtualization format where you can get an appliance from places like, um, let's say Bitnami. Let's take a look here. We can go and look at VMware Marketplace, Application Catalog. Let's get Let's get the bit NAMI. Oh, what do we want? Let's get a Git server here. 
There we go. Yeah, there we go. Gidea packaged by Bitnami. So then we can just do virtual machines and that'll take us over to our OVA download here. So download OVA format. I already have that downloaded to my files here. There it is, uh, Bitnami, there we go. So we'll switch back over to VMware Workstation and we'll open a virtual machine. Go into downloads, files, and here's my OVA file. Click open and nothing is happening. So when I first experienced this, I was really quite frustrated. I thought, oh man, they still don't have things working right. But it turns out that um, I'm simply missing a library file. It is called libnsl. So if you run into this where you are trying to open an OVA and you're hitting that button and, and nothing happens, then you're most likely missing this particular library file. See that? Keep hitting open, nothing's happening. So let's go over here. sudo dnf install-y libnsl. Now this is the same library file that's required for OVF tool to function properly. Now I did uninstall it specifically to demonstrate this particular issue. And here's the command to install it. Okay, there we go. Now I wonder if I can just do this here or if I had to relaunch the program. Let's find out. Click and look at that. This is what we want, right? This is definitely what we want. So let's, um, let's put this VM somewhere other than my home directory there. I have a different folder here. There we go. And I don't want this whole huge thing to be the name. Let's just call it Gidea and open much better and we'll import. Okay, we'll give that a moment to import. Great. Okay, so if I wanted to do a series of tutorials on, on Git operations and this particular VM, what I would typically do is I would start off with this clean import of the OVA file and I would immediately create a snapshot and I would call it clean or clean import, whatever you like. And you can put in a description if you like there and then click OK. Now, the reason I do this is because if I power this on and I start doing a bunch of stuff and I mess something up, then it's really easy for me to come back in here, go to my snapshot and just revert to snapshot. Yes, I want to restore that snapshot. So that would bring me back to that particular snapshot point in time with all the configurations, all the data inside that file. So there we go. Um, let's go ahead and just power this up. That should come up here pretty quickly. Okay. So once the Bitnami console comes up here, we can see that the default username is BN underscore user and they've provided a randomly generated password there. I don't care about this password being shown in the video because this is not gonna be a production VM. I'm probably not even gonna keep it. I'll most likely delete it here when I'm done with the video. So if I wanted to log into the console, they do give me the console username and password right there. But let's go ahead and try accessing this URL here and entering that password for the web interface. So we'll just resize this a little bit here and try the address. Okay, so there's our default page there. And we are B N underscore user. Okay, and we will sign in. And there we have it. We now have our own little Git server up and running. Now the default user that they give you is an admin. So you can come in here, go into user accounts. You can create your own user account and do whatever you like there. Um, if you don't want to have multiple users, that's fine. You can just come back 
to the little home page, create a repository, do whatever you like to do. Let's just call this demo. And now if I wanted to do a git clone of that, I could just copy here, go into my command prompt and do a git clone, paste in that URL, and I have cloned an empty repository. So if I go into demo, we see that all we have is our git config. All right, now I'm going to just do a hard power off of the system because I haven't saved any data there. And it is warning me <laughs> about the, uh, the shutdown. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it yes, I wanna shut down. Now you can right click on any of the VMs that you have in here and view their settings. You can manage things. You can do like uh, downloads and uploads and all kinds of stuff there. So there's a lot of functionality and flexibility here in Workstation Pro. Like I said, you can have multiple VMs here. They could all be running at the same time. You can go in and adjust the network adapter. So we saw that the, um, the Git server had a 199 address. That is my local area network here. It did not use the 192, 168, 110 address that I said, because that was the host only network. Now, once you've reached the end of your 30 day trial, you will need to go ahead and enter your serial number. You can do that under the help menu, enter serial number, and you just punch it in there and you'll be good to go. Okay, so that's just a quick video for this week. Um, I will do some additional videos here in VMware Workstation. So stay tuned. If you like what I'm producing here, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, subscribe. And if you wanna get notified of my upcoming videos as they get released, go ahead and hit that little bell icon. Thanks for watching, have a great week.